Um, so uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, next slide, please. So what is Ansible? I thought I'd do a real quick little thing here uh, talking about Ansible and the various parts of it. Uh, Ansible is an agentless provisioning, configuration management, and deployment tool. And when we talk about agentless, we mean you don't have to run a client. Uh, it manages things by SSHing over to them and then running uh, its code or whatever you tell it to do at that point. So you can use it for provisioning new things. You can use it for configuring them. You can use it for orchestrating deployments, uh, all kinds of things. It's a very flexible tool. And I think that's one of the reasons why it's been so popular. Um, that and that it's pretty simple. So next slide, please. Um, some more concepts. Uh, control node is where Ansible runs from. It's uh, usually the place that you have your playbook code and roles and things like that. Um, I'll talk a little later. There's uh, uh, The rel guys are working on uh, something to use containers for your control nodes, which is pretty cool. Um, but right now, control node is typically a rel, Fedora, etc., Linux box, and that SSHs to the other things that you're controlling and, uh, and runs your code. Uh, playbooks are YAML files with just a list of tasks and a list of hosts to run those tasks on. Um, they're pretty simple. You can do complicated things. You can do simple things. Uh, roles are kind of a conceptual unit of tasks. So playbooks can include roles. Uh, a, a task might be like start the web server, whereas a role might be deploy our documentation server or something like that. So roles are more specific, usually more opinionated, and they do a complex series of things that are a conceptual unit. Uh, next slide. So um, Ansible has a, a few more things. Uh, plugins uh, can change the Ansible behavior. There's all kinds of different plugins. Uh, there's connection plugins that you can get that do that change you from using SSH to log in other machines to uh, Win uh, RM, the the Win uh, Windows uh, management thing. There's uh, some that talk to routers. There's some that talk to um, just all sorts of things for connections. There's also plugins that change uh, how things look, how the output looks, how uh, the playbooks are, are parsed, uh, how your inventory is parsed, all kinds of things. Um, modules are a, a discrete code that can be called from a playbook or command line. A module would typically be things like uh, say a, a system CTL module. So it knows how to start, stop things, basically call those those particular uh, things. Uh, you might have a module that's um, authorized keys that parses the SSH authorized keys format and uh, knows how to write entries or read entries or manipulate them. So modules are just sort of a, a, a nice way to reuse that sort of generic code uh, in your playbooks. Uh, Ansible has a, a thing called Galaxy, which you can think of like it's CPAN or uh, uh, the like, or Perl PyPy. Uh, so basically, it's contributed roles and reusable uh, things from the community. And Galaxy has a lot of stuff on it. There's just all kinds of, uh, of things there that you can use. Uh, a couple of years ago, Ansible came out with a thing called Collections, which is basically a distribution format for Ansible content. So a collection contains one or more or zero or more of the following things that we just talked about. Modules, roles, um, connection plugins, whatever. It, you can put it in a collection, and Ansible knows how to move those collections around. It knows how to update them. It knows how to... Um, install them, remove them, et cetera, et cetera. So it's just like their packaging format for uh, Ansible content. Uh, next slide. Uh, so a little bit of history here uh, with Ansible. It became insanely popular for all the reasons. Uh, simple, it was easy to write, it was uh, declarative, it didn't need agents, all kinds of uh, things that people were looking for. Um, but it sort of became a victim of its own success because there was just the Ansible package and it had all the modules, it had all the all the associated stuff. There was Ansible, that was it. So this was all in one GitHub repo. It was, um, you know, growing with 
kind of without bound uh, over time. And the core developers just could not keep up with this. Uh, they tried some automation techniques, but even there, you know, a small minor change in um, a particular module that not very many people re use is not going to get that much priority. And the core developers, you know, don't get around to merging it and the thing sits around for a while and people get upset. Um, also, the, there was a problem with cadence. You know, there might be a module that updates and there's a really important thing and they need to get this module update out, but there's only the one release cadence. There's Ansible, there's the whole thing. So they have to laboriously, you know, collect everything up for a release and then do a release. And, you know, the, the schedules could not match up. Um, so they had a lot of problems with that. Next slide. Um, so they needed to, to make some changes and the, the changes they made in the last couple of years uh, are kind of to get them out of this, this hole that they were in, this popularity hole. Popularity is great and you want to keep that momentum, but you don't want to be behind and annoying people and not uh, moving forward. So what they did is they split the engine out. So uh, the engine becomes Ansible Core. It has just a few things in it. It's it's got a few basic connection plugins. It has the engine that actually handles the, the base part of Ansible. And they split that out from basically all of the collections that had all the other stuff, the modules, the things that people don't use as much, or specialized collections, et cetera. And because they had collections now, they could tell people, OK, you need to have a collection of this stuff. We're not going to maintain it in one place. We're going to have a collection of it and you maintain it. So say you're like Cisco and you want to maintain Ansible roles or uh, modules that manage your, uh, your routers. Uh, you can then directly contribute and work on that thing and have power over it. And when it releases and when you get fixes in it and you care about it and you can test it and you have the hardware and et cetera, et cetera. So this ends up accelerating all of those areas which were not getting a whole lot of uh, uh, power before because there was the bottleneck of the one package. Um, and with this model, the engine and the collections can change as they need to. There still is, of course, dependency there. You want to make sure your collections work with that particular engine. If the engine makes some radical change that needs the collections to change, you need the dependency there. But you can make that change and you can uh, develop at the same pace. And it's really important that the maintainers of these collections are people who use them. And, you know, a lot of the Ansible modules were uh, specific hardware um, or things that, you know, a core developer wouldn't even have access to that hardware to tell that it works uh, still after the change or not be very aware of how that thing works. So they might merge something that doesn't work very well with it. So it really, really works out a lot better for this uh, in this case. Next slide. Um, so what about the users who want everything? The batteries included uh, method like like we had before with one big Ansible package. So they they wanted to still handle this case because one of the one of the clear things that uh, was communicated to people in the past was that you just had to install Ansible and it's batteries included. You don't need to install a bunch of stuff and it just works. So what they did is they turned Ansible into a meta collection. So it is actually a collection of other collections. And those collections have agreed to release on the same schedule. Uh, and they've agreed to certain other restrictions. They've agreed that uh, they'll handle security bugs a certain way. They agree that their change logs are formatted in a certain way, et cetera. Uh, right now, I think it's about 120 or 130 collections in there. Uh, there's just really a lot, a lot more than there was in the monolithic Ansible package in the past. Um, so that becomes the meta collection. And then Ansible Core is the engine. So the Ansible collection has all those collections in it, and it requires Ansible Core. So if you just install Ansible, you have the whole thing. Um, also, this handles a very important case of people who want a smaller footprint. If you want it to just install Ansible Core, the engine, and you know you're only going to use these five collections, you can install those specific collections using Ansible, of course. Uh, no problem. And you don't have to install the meta collection, and you can just save yourself the, the space from that. 
Uh, next slide. So uh, what about Apple in this whole uh, whole uh, change? Uh, Apple 7 is going to keep Ansible Classic, I call it. Uh, that's the current 2.9 sort of monolithic uh, old Ansible. Uh, and that's going to end of life somewhere uh, near the end of next month. It's just uh, ending life upstream. They're not going to maintain it any further. So uh, that's kind of the end of the line for Apple 7. You're going to probably want to move your control host to something different. Uh, there's a lot of choices there, including uh, some that I'll bring up in the next few slides. Uh, for 8.6 and 9.0, uh, Ansible Core is in RHEL now. It is it is shipping in, in actual RHEL. Um, they are shipping it in order to leverage Linux system roles. Uh, if anyone here has uh, not heard of that, Linux system roles is a, uh, an Ansible collection that handles basic Linux system administration type things. So configuring your network, configuring your storage, configuring... Um, encrypted devices, all that kind of stuff. It's really handy and it's really nice. Uh, so basically they're shipping Ansible Core to support that, but you can use certainly use Ansible Core for whatever uh, you wish to from there. And we're going to add the Ansible Meta Collection to Apple 8 and 9 very soon. I think we already have branch requests out. My co-maintainers have already done that. So uh, soon, or as soon as that lands, you'll be able to install Ansible, get the meta collection and the, uh, the engine and have a similar uh, experience to what we have in Fedora. Uh, yes, as, as is pointed out, it, Ansible Core is, it is actually supported by RHEL for running Linux system roles. If you run Ansible Core in RHEL doing something else, you're not gonna get support from RHEL for that use case. Um, Next slide. So uh, I thought I'd mention a couple of uh, future items here. Um, RHEL is already using a thing called Ansible Execution Environments, uh, which folks might want to look at. It basically replaces your control host with a container uh, that's running the uh, universal base image from RHEL and a known specific set of configurations. Um, this is really nice, especially if you're wanting to run Ansible from uh, OpenShift or you don't want to particularly dedicate a control host to this. You would rather run it in a container. Uh, also, I believe Ansible Tower is is going to is or is going to be using these as well. Um, so that's a, a nice way to to run your control host. Uh, and there's been some talk about retiring the Ansible Meta Collection. Um, at some point, a number of years down the road, maybe. Um, there are still, I think, a number of users who want that all, all, uh, all collections included, uh, you know, ease of use where they don't have to worry about what they install and, and so forth. Uh, but there'll, there'll be a lot of discussion about that. And um, certainly if you have an opinion on it, you can uh, chime right on in. And uh, next slide, please. Okay, questions. Boy, I don't see any in the Q and A. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's there a are, they just weren't loading. <laughs> yeah, these are. I think these are all the uh, questions from the previous um, session. Um, so I'll throw one in. Um, wait a second, I can't hear apart. you. Ah, now what's oh, it doing? No. Can anyone else hear me? Okay, Marie Come can hear on. me. Um, can you hear me? Hello, Kevin. I hear you. Yes, I can hear you now. All right, All right great. Anyway. Um, so I'll, I'll go ahead and throw a question your way. So, uh, apart from the, you know, change in how the, uh, modules are, are collected, um, are there any other sort of big user facing differences in Ansible five that people should be aware of? Um, not a whole lot. Um, there is, well, there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff. Uh, the version of Python that's required is, is newer, which of course doesn't matter in Fedora because we're already using the newest Python, but, uh, for RHEL it's using uh, Python 3.8, which is the, the lowest requirement. Um, 
but yeah, there's not a whole lot of change there so far. Uh, there's the playbooks that you have now in using in the old Ansible will, for the most part, run fine uh, in Ansible 5. Uh, they've also, uh, I probably should have mentioned this, they've also switched to uh, semantic versioning for Ansible now. So if you have an Ansible 5.x, it's going to be compatible. And then when they do Ansible 6, there'll, there'll be a breaking change there. And you'll have to check your playbooks for deprecations and so forth and so on. But uh, yeah, not, not a whole lot of big things for, for user facing type side of things. Newer collections, I suppose. So how much does Ansible upstream participate in Fedora? Or is it basically um, they produce their version and then we package it up and use it? Um, well, yeah, it's been pretty much like that. I was I was maintaining uh, Ansible for a long time, pretty much by myself. Uh, but now lately, I've gotten some great co-maintainers. Um, one of one of whom is in the chat, uh, uh, Maxwell, and uh, also uh, we've had some help from. Uh, um, Upstream, uh, one of the upstream community guys is now also packaging. He did the initial Ansible 5 packaging for Fedora. Uh, so he's been working on that. And uh, Neil Gompa helped us with the, uh, the Ansible packaging package, which allows you to build uh, collections uh, in Fedora. So um, yeah, it's kind of a, a, a mix. They're not like super involved in Fedora, but uh, there is definitely still some involvement. 